Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Wednesday, July 22nd. Today is the day the Lutheran Church commemorates St. Mary Magdalene. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. By the waters of Babylon, there we sat down and wept, when we remembered Zion. On the willows there, we hung our lyres. For there our captors required of us songs, and our tormentors mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Remember, O Lord, against the Edomites the day of Jerusalem, how they said, Lay it bare, lay it bare, down to its foundation. Our Old Testament reading today is from 1 Samuel chapters 5 and 6. When the Philistines captured the Ark of God, they brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then the Philistines took the ark of the ark. Then the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it into the house of Dagon, and set it up beside Dagon. And when the people of Ashdod rode early the, rose early the next day, behold, Dagon had fallen face downward on the ground before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and put him back in his place. But when they rose early on the next morning, behold. Dagon had fallen face downward on the ground before the ark of the Lord, and the head of Dagon and both of his hands were lying cut off on the threshold. Only the trunk of Dagon was left to him. This is why the priests of Dagon and all who enter the house of Dagon do not tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod to this day. The hand of the Lord was heavy against the people of Ashdod, and he terrified and afflicted them with tumors both Ashdod and its territory. And when the men of Ashdod saw how things were, they said, The ark of the God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is hard against us and against Dagon our God. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? They answered, Let the ark of God of Israel be brought around to Gath. So they brought the ark of the God of Israel there. But after they had brought it around, the hand of the Lord was against the city, causing a very great panic. And he afflicted the men of the city, both young and old, so that tumors broke out on them. So they sent the ark of God to Ekron. But as soon as the ark of God came to Ekron, the people of Ekron cried out, They have brought around to us the ark of the God of Israel to kill us and our people. They sent therefore and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel and let it return to its own place, that it may not kill us and our people. For there was a deathly panic throughout the whole city. The hand of God was very heavy there. The men who did not die were struck with tumors, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. The ark of the Lord was in the country of the Philistines seven months, and the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners and said, What shall we do with the ark of the Lord? Tell us, what shall we do to send it to its place? They said, If you send away the ark of the God of Israel, do not send it empty, but by all means return him with a a guilt offering. Then he will be healed, and it will be known to you why his hand does not turn away from you. The men did so, and took two milk cows, and yoked them to the cart, and shut up their calves at home. And they put the ark of the Lord on the cart and the box with the golden mice and the images of their tumors. And the cows went straight in the direction of Beth Shemesh, along one highway, lowing as they went. 
They turned neither to the right nor to the left, and the lords of the Philistines went after them as far as the border of Beth Shemesh. Now the people of Beth Shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley, and when they lifted up their eyes they saw the ark. They rejoiced to see it. The cart came into the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh and stopped there. A great stone was there, and they split up the wood of the cart and offered the cows as a burnt offering to the Lord. And the Levites took down the ark of the Lord and the box that was beside it, in which were the golden figures, and set them upon the great stone. And the men of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings and sacrificed sacrifices on that day to the Lord. And when the five lords of the Philistines saw it, they returned that day to Ekron. And our writing today is from Valerius Herberger talking about uh, Mary Magdalene. And it's from a book called the Herz Evangelia, that means um, a heart gospel. Now, Valerius Herberger was a 16th century Polish Lutheran pastor. Uh, in those days, Poland was part of the Holy Roman Empire. And he wrote a lot. He wrote Bible commentaries. He wrote sermons for every passage in Genesis through Ruth. Uh, he was trying to do the entire Old Testament, uh, but he unfortunately died before he completed it. He wrote ser little sermon devotions, these heart postals, uh, for all the epistles for every Sunday of the church here, as well as for the Gospels. I've got a picture of him here. This is his book of the Epistle Sermons uh, from 1726, and that's Valerius Herberger right there. Uh, so he wrote many, many of these great big books, and a good bit of it has been translated into English. Uh, his sermons for Genesis and Exodus, which comprise three good-sized books, and then there's various writings in Treasury of Daily Prayer uh, by him, uh, all of which were translated by my professor, Benjamin Mays, who was our uh, Book of Concord professor for the two classes I had with him. And Valerius Herberger also wrote one hymn, I don't think it's in our hymnal, uh, when there was an outburst of plague uh, when he was uh, the pastor in uh, Freitag, which was... Uh, means free city uh, in Poland. And he says about Mary Magdalene, The ancient teachers of the church are, for the most part, of the opinion that Mary Magdalene was this sinful woman of which Luke writes here, Luke 7, 36-56. We do not want to grow gray hairs over this debate, so we will go directly to the account that has been read. How does Mary Magdalene's repentant heart please the Lord Jesus? The host, Simon, is displeased with Mary, and with Christ, but the Lord Jesus shows that there is joy in heaven over Mary's conversion. The sinner's tears are the wine and the delicacies of the angels. You see, first he turns to Mary just as he turned to Peter in his passion. This is a great honor. Second, he praises her tears, her kiss, and her anointing, and he lets it be clearly understood that with these three courses, Mary served a much more glorious meal than the host of the house himself. Of this Christendom sings, This is the feast that is pleasing to you, O wise Father. From her tears, the Lord Jesus notices a humble heart, troubled by sins committed. From her kiss, he notices her faith and trust. From her anointing, he notices the intention of her heart, that from now on she will use everything that is precious to her for the glory of Christ. Moreover, he praises the thankfulness of her heart, that she showed through many signs of love. He says, Her many sins are forgiven on account of which she has loved much. This is how Basil, Chrysostom, and Theophylact explain this message. You can see from her many agreeing signs of love that her kisses and anointing are her thanks be to God, or her tip, not because they are worth so much, but because she has nothing more. It is not Christ's intention to say that Mary merited the forgiveness of sins with her love, but rather, he shows that through so many signs of love, Mary revealed her thankful heart, thankful that the Lord Jesus had graciously forgiven her so many sins, and this pleases him very well. And we now join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as always, our Wednesday prayer is the shorter litany. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare all the dying. From all sin, from all evil, from the devil's might, from the devil's wiles. From your wrath and from hell's torment, from sudden and evil death, good Lord, deliver them. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help them, good Lord. In the hour of death, on the day of judgment, help them, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord. To comfort all the dying, to forgive them all their sins, to lead them out of this misery into eternal life. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, restored Mary Magdalene to health and called her to be the first witness of his resurrection. Heal us from all our infirmities and call us to know you in the power of your Son's unending life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this night. And I pray that you would, I, excuse me, I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.